Finally, at long last, Google has responded to our frustrated cries and launched this little beauty here, the Pixel 3a, otherwise known as the Pixel phone for people who don't have big, fat, stacked wallets. Not since the days of Nexus 5 have I been this excited about a Google-branded handset. I really like the original Pixel 3, but that near £800 asking price is crazier than a barrel full of rabid monkeys, especially considering the strong value offered by various Chinese mobile manufacturers. And so enter the Pixel 3a, which rocks pretty much the same camera smarts the full fat Pixel 3 but for a much more palatable £400. I've been using the Pixel 3a as my full-time personal handset for the past five days and here is how I'm getting on with it so far in my early review. And don't forget for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech to plug subscribe and ding that there notifications bell. Cheers! Have a squint at the Pixel 3a and you could easily confuse it for the original Pixel 3. Alongside the Galaxy S10e, this is one of the most compact handsets that I've fondled in 2019, and that's despite the relatively thick bezels framing that 5.6 inch display. Frankly, I'd forgotten how good it felt to handle something under 6 inches. Hello Vicar, FNAF FNAF, etc. Here on the Pixel 3a, you do get a basic polycarbonate casing compared with the Gorilla Glass finish on the original. It's a cost cut and measure that I'm perfectly happy with. Google's mid-ranger still feels perfectly premium, with that same two-tone finish available in three different colours. This black model, admittedly, ain't exactly exciting. I definitely prefer those lighter hues, but thankfully the Pixel 3a seems to be perfectly durable. A few days of being tossed about in its raw naked form hasn't left a single mark on those smooth surfaces. Beware, however, as this handset also lacks the water resistance of that full original Pixel 3, so don't go tempting fear by taking any poolside selfies or anything like that. That's one area where the Galaxy S10e has the upper hand, but I definitely prefer the positioning of the Pixel's fingerprint sensor compared with Samsung's rather awkward edge-mounted beast. This rear scanner works a charm fall naturally onto your finger when you pick up the phone. Now some people might like a ruddy massive display for watching a bit of Netflix or whatever, but the Pixel 3a's 5.6 inch screen is perfectly fine for enjoying some telly on the go. This OLED panel isn't a Quad HD wonder and there is no dedicated HDR support, but the Full HD Plus visuals are still pleasingly crisp thanks to the compact finish, with nice deep blacks and clean whites. And on the default adaptive mode, those colours really pop too. And media lovers also well catered for on the audio front. The stereo speaker setup may relegate that bottom blaster to the edge now, but it's still a powerful enough output for enjoying a bit of YouTube in a noisy environment. And look at this cheeky wee bugger up here. Hello. Hello there, Mr. 3.5mm headphone jack. We missed you, mate. Of course, you once again get full Bluetooth 5 support here on the Pixel 3a as well, and I've had absolutely no issues with streaming either, unlike the original Pixel 3 at launch. And the 64 gigs of storage packed in there as well, which is fine for carrying around a decent sized media collection, although unfortunately there is no expandability via micro SD memory cards. As you'd hopefully expect, Google's latest Android Pie OS is smushed lovingly onto the Pixel 3a. I still personally prefer some overlays such as Samsung's One UI and the likes of Nova Launcher with that deeper customization. I do have occasional little grumbles like for instance the complete lack of facial recognition, but to be perfectly honest nothing that makes me want to rip the sim out of the Pixel 3a and slap it back into the Samsung Galaxy S10e. Anyway, I won't spend much time banging on about the software as the Pixel 3a software experience is essentially the same as the Pixel 3. Anyone who likes a streamlined, fuss-free UI will definitely get on with it. And there is some surprisingly deep functionality here on the Pixel 3a as well, and places where you might not know or expect, including some behind the scenes shenanigans to help keep the phone running nice and smoothly. Speaking of the performance, this phone sports the more budget-friendly Snapdragon 670 chipset backed by 4 gigs of RAM. But all the same, I've only seen a few very rare little judders here during everyday use. Even in split screen with a video streaming as I browse the web or answer emails, the Pixel 3a doesn't break down in despair. A few gamers out there, great news, the Pixel 3a can also easily handle the likes of PUBG without soiling its drawers. The game actually selects the high detail settings by default and runs like a dream with a consistently high frame rate throughout, even surprisingly when bombing about on a bike. As for battery life, the Pixel 3a's 3000mAh cell is a slight upgrade on the original and you have the same features such as the battery saver mode and such forth. All the same, even with the adaptive power mode activated, I did find that the phone just about lasted the day. And one time when I absolutely hammered it with Spotify streaming, a bit of YouTube action and some camera use, it did die just before bedtime. That polycarbonate finish and the general cost cutting means that there is no support for wireless charging anymore. But honestly, who gives a f***? And finally, the juicy bits, otherwise known as the camera tech. 
I was massively relieved to learn that the Pixel 3 uses the same hardware and super smart software as the standard Pixel 3, albeit with the unfortunate culling of that Pixel Visual Core. All the same, Google did insist that the photo and video quality would be very comparable to the original Pixel 3, and I've certainly found that to be the case. The 12.2 megapixel rear snapper grabs sharp, detailed snaps and handles tricky lighting with ease. The HDR smarts are untouchable at this sort of price point, which is great news for those rare sunny days. And when the light all but disappears, Google's slick night sight mode steps up and delivers grain-free photos, boasting impressive colour capture. It's still not quite as impressive as Huawei's night mode, but it's really not far off. And considering the lack of a depth sensor here, those Pixel phones have really nailed portrait shots. Google's clever machine learning algorithms means accurate edge detection in any kind of circumstances. The video chops are just as strong as well, with up to 4K resolution recording on offer. Colours are accurately reproduced, awkward light is once again dealt with, and the image stabilisation is solid, even at that Ultra HD level. For my full thoughts on that camera tech, definitely go check out my in-depth review over on Recombu. So in conclusion, after five days, I'm already convinced that Google has a winner on its hands. The Pixel phones were always inaccessible to the masses at that ridiculous near grand price point, but now us poor plebs can finally get our hands on that excellent camera tech. And I do still absolutely adore the compact form factor. So that is what I reckon of the Google Pixel 3a after a few days of use. So are you tempted by this mini mobile? Definitely let us know in the comments down below. I've uh, done a full comparison with the Pixel 3a XL as well and also compared the XL model to the original Pixel 3 XL so go check those out if you want more pixely goodness and uh, don't forget to poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers everyone!